Welcome to Update 9 on Extremely Severe Hurricane Matthew. It is back up to Cat 4 intensity, as if it ever lost it in the first place. And my oh my, is it a Category 4 with current winds of 150 miles per hour. A current wind field that extends out nearly two over uh, 200 miles in diameter. And... A current forward speed of north-northwest at 7 miles per hour. To go over the current warnings that are up right now on the screen, here they are. A hurricane warning is in effect for the entirety of Jamaica. A hurricane warning is in effect for Haiti from the southern border with the Dominican Republic to the Mont Saint Nicolas. A hurricane watch is in effect for, from Haiti from east of Le Mont Saint Nicolas to the northern border with the Dominican Republic and a hurricane watch is in effect for Cuba from the Camagüe province to the Guantanamo province. Interest obviously in Hispaniola, Jamaica, Cuba and the southern Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands should be following this system closely. Here's an experimental graphic called the CDPS that I'm currently working on trying to get a better specter of just how much damage a storm will cause. Of course, this storm, as it moves north, it's expected to actually weaken a little bit. The NHC is expecting it to lose intensity. It's not expected to maintain, and we'll go over why in a moment. Uh, but currently, it's expected to make landfall on the far western side of the Tiburon Peninsula. I imagine that's probably going to shift further to the west, because the models have been shifting left, right, left, right, left, right for the best, better part of a week. Um, if this stays like this for 24 hours, I would imagine that it's probably not going to change much. But uh, take this cone with a little bit of a grain of salt. I'm still expecting it to pass uh, offshore of both Jamaica and Haiti, and then eventually make landfall in Cuba. Uh, but anyways, just to explain what's on the screen here, uh, stage 7 means that it has a lot of destructive potential with it, 7 out of 10, and even though that might seem a little low, it's not a 7 means serious business. Uh, the last storm to make landfall with this kind of a destructive potential, and I don't like using these words sometimes, is Hurricane Cleo back in 1964. So it's been a long time for Haiti. That was actually the last time that a Category 4 hurricane has made landfall in Haiti during the very bad 1963 to 1966 stress, where three major hurricanes made landfall in Haiti within a span of four years. Current satellite on Matthew shows that it is definitely looking a ton better than it did this morning when I did my earlier update, and it's certainly deserving 150 miles per hour. Sea surface temperatures are no problem. 28, 29, 30 degrees Celsius. Reds indicate 30. Uh, the bright orange is 29. The not so bright orange is 27 to 28. Deep orange is 25, 26. And as you can see, there's no deep oranges anywhere in there. This is a definite. So, sea surface temperatures, not an issue. Wind shear is the issue, and it's probably the biggest issue with this storm. Um, again, this wind shear layer is expected to break down a little bit as the storm moves northward. The trough that's located right here, and ridge, which is located right here, they're going to come together. This storm's going to shoot right up the hole, where it goes after it makes landfall in either Haiti, Jamaica, Cuba, or whatever, and moves north of the Bahamas. We really don't know what's happening after that. As far as water vapor, there's no dry air to mess up with this system, so it's really only the wind shear that is holding against this storm being a Cat 5 all the way there, and it shouldn't be. Uh, here are some model predictions, and you can see that there are some models that do expect this... <coughs> Sorry, there are some models that do expect this kind of intensity, including the UK Met being the most aggressive model. Uh, I would not trust that. That is an extreme outlier. 
Most models are hinting weakening down to a cap 4, cap 3 range. And about that, making landfall in Haiti, Cuba, wherever, weakening more, and then going out past 72 hours, maintaining intensity past the Bahamas. I'm expecting much the same. But again, these models, they've been shifting back and forth between Jamaica, Haiti, Jamaica, Haiti, Jamaica, Haiti. So nothing's really set in stone yet, and I think it's going to take an average of those two and split the two islands. But uh, regardless, Haiti, Jamaica, Cuba are likely to receive significant impacts from the storm. Uh, Bahamas, exactly where, it's a little less certain at this point. And completely uncertain about US impacts. So the bottom line here Matthew is now moving north away from Colombia which is good news it's dumped a lot of rain over Colombia. Models have shifted to the east over Haiti which is not good news especially considering the last major hurricane to make landfall in Haiti caused nearly 600 deaths. Models have been oscillating between Haiti and Jamaica for the past week so I would imagine that oscillation would continue. If it doesn't, by morning, I would be more certain of a landfall in Haiti. Uh, but again, we'll see as time goes on. Effects in Jamaica and Haiti should begin Monday morning, and all preparation should be done before the storm begins. Whatever storm preparations you need to do, get them done now. Cuba will be receiving the storm a about a day later, maybe even a little bit less so, be prepared. So that'll be Tuesday morning, maybe even as early as Monday evening for Cuba. And again, it's still unknown what effects will be in the U.S. at this time. So, you can follow Force 13, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel down below, obviously. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter, Force 13 all in text. And if you want to have tropical weather discussion with us, add Nathan Foy on Skype at full 13 f 3 We'll see you for the next update. Stay tuned and stay prepared with Matthew bearing down in your back door.